my god, what's the time? 11.36. I'm so late. <laughs> How about we sit down? So, hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today is Saturday, the 12th of July, and the Bookopoly, the book, book, the Bookopoly readathon has officially started. This is a 48 hour readathon. It's happening over the weekend, uh, hosted by Becca. Technically, um, it started 35 minutes ago. I'm a little bit late, but, uh, that's okay. And I believe the first two prompts were paranormal, uh, read a paranormal book and pick a chance card book. The chance card is really just random, basically. And so I have my book. I know what I'm going to be reading. Uh, this morning I asked my boyfriend to pick a book off of my unread shelves. Uh, just any random book and I thought that would be pretty fair because there's an even amount of books on there that I would like to read and would not necessarily like to read. I mean they're all books that I want to get to at some point obviously but you know some that I want to get to sooner rather than others. So I thought that was a pretty good way of doing the chance card prompt. Um, if you've watched my oh, if you've watched my quarterly TBR video, you would have heard that I am trying to read only physical books this month. Uh, which I've made an exception for things like readathons in case I can't find a book that I own or that I can like buy that fits the prompt. Uh, but this worked perfectly for, for the chance card prompt. So uh, the first book that I'll be getting to is Girls with Sharp Sticks. This is I think it's meant to be like a dystopian kind of dark academia vibes i believe my friend taya has been wanting me to read this book for so long she's just like really wants me to read it um and i bought it i think like two weeks ago or something so uh happy that i can finally get to this <laughs> he uh he picked well very happy with this i have a have a bit of time to read this uh i am a little bit worried about the late night roll for the second prompt not gonna lie what oh right so with the two prompts uh Baker said that you can pick you know which prompt you want to read each 12 hours you don't have to do both but you can do both if you want to uh i fully went into this readathon intending to do like both of the two prompts each 12 hours not so sure about that uh currently right now because i have a lot of other stuff to do this weekend so I might just be sticking to one book each 12 hours, but I guess we'll just like, we'll see. I could get to like two books in a few of the 12 hours and like a few of the rounds. We'll just have to see. Um, but I'm not really going to push myself too hard. I think I absolutely love that about how Baker's like made this so you can choose how hard it is going to be for yourself. So, so I'm probably going to try and make it easy because, um, you know, had a bit of a had a bit of bad luck with my last few readathons, so I kind of want to win this. Um, and I think all you really have to do to win is read one book. So, so as long as I finish Girls with Sharp Sticks, I'm good. Before I leave, I have some book mail that I thought could be fun to unbox together. So, let's do that. Okay. Yes. All right. So very topical in the first one we have the library of the unwritten by aj uh hackworth i just read this for the reading vlog that i'm going to be editing and uploading i listened to the audiobook though and the thing was i ordered the physical copy because like for the reading for the readathon that i was filming i also one of these other packages is going to be another book that i tried to read in that <laughs> readathon um but they didn't arrive in time so I had to find other copies. I had to listen to the audiobook for this one. Okay, let's open the next one. Ooh. This was also a book that I was meant to read last month. And that's A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I'm kind of glad I didn't read this last month. There was no way I would have been able to read this last month. I was so busy. But um, I did say I would do a reading vlog for this book. So, um, I guess I have the joy of doing that this month. And I know what this last book is, and I'm very excited. 
God, it's so pretty. I forgot I got the hardback. Um, I got Cry as War by Nina Varela. Um, I also read this in the readathon reading vlog that I am going to be uploading today. So, um, if you want to hear more about it, you can go check that out. I didn't actually finish it in the readathon. So, I'm going to be reading this this month. She's shiny. She's so pretty. Oh my goodness. So, a little book haul to start the vlog off. Very cute. I'm going to go put these on my shelves. Um, and then I'm probably just going to edit uh, this other reading vlog that I need to get up. And then I'll update you guys once I settle down uh, to start reading Girls with Shopsticks. Hello. It is 3.30 and I wish I was here to uh, tell you that I am going to start reading Girls with Shopsticks. Uh, but I am not. Um, I am so tired and my phone is dying. So I'm going to probably, in all honesty, have a nap. Uh, might have a little snack before I have a nap, but I'm probably gonna have a nap. Probably gonna watch some YouTube, probably gonna fall asleep. Ooh. This is, uh, this is currently where we're at right now. Much, much, much later. So it's like 7 p.m.? It's 10 to 7 uh, p.m. So that means I have just over four hours to read Girls with Sharp Sticks. That's right, I haven't started reading yet, but that's okay. Um, I am insanely tired right now. Insanely tired. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about that because I had a coffee earlier today. Uh, and I think it's one of those days where as soon as I have a coffee, I instantly want to sleep. So I'm not sure if coffee is the right way to go. Um, might just end up snacking a little bit. Uh, we'll see. But this book is only 392, 93 pages long. Um, the font's kind of small, but I think it'll be okay. So, honestly, I'm just going to get to reading right now. Um, and we're just gonna try power through this. <laughs> okay, after that lovely vine interruption, uh, how about an update? I'm on chapter 8, page 88 of Girls with Shopsticks. Let me tell you, something fucky's going on in this academy. Um, I don't know if I've said what this is about yet, so basically on the back it's, um, let, let me just read it to you, let me just read it to you. Uh, the Girls of Innovations Academy are beautiful and well-behaved. It says so on their report cards. Under the watchful gaze of their guardian, they receive a well-rounded education that promises to make them better. Obedient girls, free from arrogance or defiance, free from troublesome opinions or individual interests. Um, but, but, the girl's carefully controlled existence may not be quite what it appears, as Mina and her friends uncover the dark secrets of what's actually happening there and who they really are, the girls of Innovations Academy will learn to fight back. So, um, apparently Suzanne Young has written books before. I don't think I have read her other ones. Yeah, basically we're introduced to these girls who are at the innovation academy it's very obvious that they're being you know taught to not have opinions um never to act out they basically have to listen to the men that teach at the school um they have to be grateful for the men in their lives and grateful for the men's opinions and they're like mm, existing for men basically and that's like gross but you know um like, 
you know, strong, strong start, interesting, you know, catches your attention, you're like, why, like, who the fuck would send their kids here to the school to teach their kids to act like this? But it is very obvious that there is something else going on. So, uh, in one of the first chapters, one of the girls, Valentine, I keep going to call her, like, whenever I read her name, I read it as Valentina for some reason, but her name is Valentine, she acts out, she's disobedient at one point. And she gets this, um, it's like impulse control therapy, I think that's what they call it. Um, my memory is so bad. I literally just read about it. Like, I should be able to remember what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's impulse control therapy. Um, and most of the girls have had it. But basically, you find out that it's like, I think Valentine's had it a few times. Our main character, Mina, uh, she mentions that she's had it once, but she can't remember like what happens like she remembers like her therapist was like yep they have like a therapist at the school the therapist was like yep you're going to get the control therapy whatever she remembers going in and then she remembers leaving 24 hours she doesn't remember anything from like the therapy time though um very interesting but basically valentine acted out and she went and got this like the impulse control therapy but now she's acting very strange stranger than she was before she's been acting strange since the start of the book but um i'm very uh you know it's really obvious that something bad's going on in this uh in this academy it's mentioned a few times that the academy building was originally a metalworks factory then it was also a hospital and also uh like technology owned by like a technology company i think all of these are going to come together i think the hospital and the technology thing are going to be important at some point um there's also like a really weird like lots of hints to something being important to do with like flowers and also their diets they have to eat like specific um they eat like really clean foods like own like no additives in their foods no sugars all that stuff but it's like mentioned that they eat foods that they grow at the academy and they also get given pills each night don't think they know what's in the pills but obviously you know i'm just i think i'm just a little bit suspicious of like everything in this book because something is not right here but honestly i have no idea where this is gonna go but i am definitely interested and i definitely want to know <laughs> I have not binge read a book this quickly in so long. I'm loving this. <laughs> Update. I'm on page 225. Things are getting interesting. <sighs> I can't even remember if I said any theories at the start. But like, you know, I said that there was something interesting about the pills that they had to take. And I said there's something interesting about the impulse control therapy. Goodness. And absolutely, both of those things have been important. Um, all the girls have, like, all the main girls have stopped taking their pills, and they're starting to, like, notice that things are different, like, when they don't take the pills. And I'm in a very interesting part where they're trying to find out what happens at the impulse control therapy, because no one remembers once they come out. I'm very excited to see what happens, because I really want to know. This is just, I like, I feel like I haven't been so invested in a book in so long, like, this much. I'm just, it's so good so good anyway in all honesty i'm probably gonna finish this really soon definitely before 11 p.m because i just cannot stop reading so straight up this is so fucked it's so good though it's so good Tell me why I'm in like the last 40 pages and I'm about to cry. <laughs> well, would you look at the time? It's 11.50 and I just finished Girls with Shopsticks. This was a fucking ride. I don't even know what to say. Okay, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give anything away. But I will say... Everything that I mentioned, like anything that I mentioned prediction-wise or like that I talked about being interesting, definitely important. I'm, I'm honestly like a little bit, like 
mad at myself for not guessing the like the final plot twist because like once i read it i was like that makes like that is just like the only logical explanation like of course that's of course that's it like that's that's it that's it that's all explained but like i didn't i fully did not expect where it was going to go until i read it i didn't expect to read like a really good fucking book in this reading vlog not gonna lie this was incredible like potentially a uh, five stars from me i think it okay it's probably more like a four stars but like girls with sharp sticks by suzanne yun read it give it a go uh i would recommend it that was so fun my mind's just like a little bit blown right now like pfft wow wow okay so it is just past 11 i just checked the bookopoliathon twitter page looked at the prompts the prompts for the next 12 hours uh the first role was to read a culturally diverse book and the second prompt is to read a viewer's recommendation i think i'll go and put up a poll on instagram a poll like a question saying get people to recommend me books so i can go to sleep and wake up in the morning and check and see if anyone's actually recommended me anything to read and if they haven't we'll just quickly pick something off my unread shelf that is culturally diverse we love some diversity diversity is stunning we'll just see how that goes those are good prompts though like they're not too tricky to find books for which i'm so grateful for yeah that's what i'm gonna do it's 11 p.m i'm waking up early tomorrow so i'm gonna say good night that's it that's that's day one <sighs> okay everyone happy sunday it is day two of the readathon and we are five minutes away from the third prompt roll for the readathon it is almost 11 a.m on sunday uh, so I obviously have some updating to do for you guys. So last night I went on Instagram and I posted on my story asking for some recommendations. I got a few, but honestly, a lot of them were ones that I had already read. Uh, shout out to Kylie for recommending two books that I've been wanting to read for a very long time. But overall, the recommendations on Instagram were kind of lacking, but... Thankfully, last night I also went on Twitter and I tweeted at the Bookopoliathon Twitter page and I posted a picture of my own TBR and I had so many recommendations, so many lovely people telling me what I should read. So I'm all set for the challenges that were announced last night. Uh, it also helped me realize that I can still go back and do the first prompt uh, for the first round, which I realized I I think I said it wrong. I think I said that it was paranormal, like the role was to read a paranormal book. It was actually to read um, a magical realism book, which I absolutely did not know. So thank you to everyone for reminding me about that. There were so many people being like, hey, if you read this book, you can fill it in for like all of these different prompts, which was super, super great. Like, thank you. Just thank you so much to everyone who um made a suggestion that was really nice for the second role for the prompt where you get someone to recommend a book to read i decided to go and read milk and honey by rupi ka someone saw this on my own tbr shop and they're like a few people said i should read this and i mean it makes sense it's a very short poetry collection um so i went and read this this morning which was honestly and definitely gives me 2014 tumblr vibes if i had read this i think i got this for like my 15th or 16th birthday if i had read that back then i would have loved this so much i would have thought it was phenomenal groundbreaking um there were definitely some poems that i liked i went through and marked uh the ones that i thought were good there's also a little one up there or even not necessarily the ones that I thought were good, just like the ones that had lines that I liked or concepts that I thought were interesting. Um, but I think overall, reading through this, all of these poems reminded me of something that I would take. Like it took me back to when I did my poetry paper uh, <laughs> in at university and it, all of these poems reminded me of like 
drafts that I would take in. They read like first drafts that people would bring in and then we would have our tutor be like, interesting beginnings, here's how to make it better. Like they just, I guess they just felt a little bit underdeveloped. Um, I mean, I can totally see what the whole appeal is, you know, they're, um, they're, you know, they're like short, sweet, simple poems. Anyone can read them. Anyone can understand what they're saying. How did, like, didn't anyone tell her to, like, dig a little deeper? I don't know. I think I just wanted a little bit more. I think I'm gonna give this, like, a three stars. I also had one person who suggested that I read a Murakami book. Uh, because his books would fit three of the four prompts that have already been given. Uh, so I am going to find... I only have three Murakami books that I own, and I've read all three of them. So I'm going to go online and I'm going to try and find a copy of After Dark, which I believe, if it's not a collection of short stories, it is a short story, it's only about 200 pages. So I'm going to go and find that online and read that today, and that is going to fulfill the magical realism prompt. And I know it could double up for the third prompt role, which was to read a culturally diverse book. But for that, I am currently almost halfway through with When the Pool Met Rishi. This is a YA romance, someone saw that and they were like, you should definitely read this. It's, you know, fun and super sweet. And I can agree, it is fun and super sweet. I am really enjoying this. And I've been flying through it. Probably because it's like a YA contemporary romance, I do usually fly through these pretty quickly. Um, I actually also messaged my good friend Thal, who is in my book club with me, and I sent her the pictures of my shelves and she was like, read The City of Frost, but I'm gonna be reading that uh, for another readathon later this month. But one book that was continuously recommended to me, which made me so excited because I have been dying to read it for so long, was Middle Game by Sean and Maguire. Uh, this is, I think, by the same guy who wrote same guy, same girl. I think she's a, I think she's a she. I think. I swear I read something where I always, is the author, uh, she, yeah, she. Um, my bad. She, I'm pretty sure, is also the author of Every Heart of Doi, which is like a magical realism series. Uh, but this has been on my TBR for so long and it was impossible to get in New Zealand for a really, really long time. And I bought this when I went down to visit my family, not last week, but like back in June, because my favorite local bookstore had got it in. I emailed them last year, I think end of last year, asking if they could get this in. And maybe it was earlier this year. I'd emailed them at some point asking if they could get it in and they said it would take like two weeks or something. So I was like, don't worry about it. I'll like, I don't need it that badly. But they got it in anyway, like they just bought it for the bookstore and I saw it there and I immediately got it because I've been dying to read this. And just seeing as it was recommended to me so many times, I'm going to take this as like a second book for the viewer recommended prompt. I was just going to read this for the viewer's recommended prompt but um, she's a little bit thick. So I went ahead and read Milk and Honey just so I could, like I could have completed the prompt and I can start reading this without worrying about like finishing the prompt before the readathon but I am definitely excited to get to this day I think it's time I think it's time I finally cracked it open but anyway that's a little update for you guys I read Milk and Honey I am going to go find After Dark by Murakami uh I am halfway through when Dimple met Rishi and I am going to be starting middle game at some point uh, but now it is past 11, so the new prompts have been announced. I'm gonna go check them out so I can just like come back and immediately tell you guys what I'm going to read uh, for these prompts. Okay, so I've gone and checked the next prompt rolls. Uh, roll number five was to read a mystery or thriller, and prompt number six was to read a book that has been gifted to you. Honestly, both of these prompts are probably the trickiest ones yet. Maybe, I was gonna say I don't have any mystery thrillers on my bookshelves, but Bunny could potentially count. Bunny by Mona, is it Award? Mona Award, I think. Um, all I know about Bunny is that it's like a cult, dark academia kind of book. I don't know if it's technically a mystery or thriller. 
I might have to go and check Goodreads to see what genres it's listed under, but that could potentially be an option and I would love to read Bunny. I've been dying to read Bunny for a really long time. But the second one, a book that has been gifted, uh, I mean actually, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, in the bottom of my bookshelf, the bottom shelf, I have a whole shelf that is just books that I've borrowed from my mom's house. So actually I have a lot of options for this one. Yeah, definitely not as terrible as I thought. I have I have a few options that I can uh, that I can that I can pick from. Ugh. Okay. So I looked online and apparently Bunny is a horror, not a mystery or thriller. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um I went on Twitter and uh, asked if anyone had any good mystery thriller recommendations and I guess I'll just wait to see if anyone does uh, but I've picked a book for the gifted book prompt um, I realized this I mean it's kind of cheating but it's also kind of not it works perfectly um, I literally just got back from visiting my family uh, two days ago and I bought back Quiet by Suzanne Kane. This is like so dirty, but um, uh, I have started reading it. I've also mentioned this book before. I've read like several years ago, I think I picked this up and I read the first few chapters, but I honestly cannot remember what it really is about. I mean, I know what it's about, but I like don't remember reading it. Um, so I've started reading it again, but as you can see, I'm only like, I think I'm only on the first chapter. I'm really not that far in. And I would really love to finish it. So I'm going to finish Quiet by Suzanne Kane. Um, that's going to be my book because I've technically borrowed it from my mom. So that works. But in the meantime, while I wait to hear if people have any recommendations for the mystery and thriller prompt, I am going to carry on reading When Dimple Met Rishi. Can we just talk about this for a second? Because I don't think I actually talked about it when I said that I'd started reading it. This is so fucking cute. So it's a dual POV, uh, young adult, romance, contemporary. Uh, it follows Dimple, who, uh, I, what does she want? She wants to be like a web developer. And basically the book opens out, turns out she's gone into Stanford University and over the summer there's this web development course that she can take in san francisco um but she's worried her parents won't let her go uh her parents are she thinks they're like you know they're very traditionally indian she thinks they're like really strict and they want her to follow all these rules that dimple doesn't really like um so she's worried that they're not going to let her go to san francisco but they do um and when she's there on her first day this guy comes up to her and he's like oh hey my future wife and dimple's like excuse me throws her coffee at him and like runs away because she thinks he's like a weirdo uh turns out that's rishi and uh rishi thinks that well rishi knows that him and dimple have been set up to be in like an arranged marriage or a potential arranged marriage situation um but dimple's parents haven't told her they wanted her to go to San Francisco because they knew Rishi would be there and they knew that she would meet him. Um, but they didn't tell her because they knew if they did, she would not want to go because she doesn't, she's not interested in getting married. She's not interested in tradition. She just wants to design an app, go to university, be herself, you know? So they meet like that. That's very, um, <laughs> I honestly like so funny. I like, I loved it so much and like, it's so great. It's so great. Anyway, they're, um, Dimple's very much like, no, I'm not interested in getting married. I had no idea that this was happening. I'm sorry that my parents got you into this. Um, but they're, turns out they're partners for this, um, for this workshop, this web development course that they're at. So they're working on developing an app together. It's Dimple's idea. Um, but they're working on it together and they're becoming friends. There have been a few, you know, cute moments where there's a little bit of tension and you're like, ooh. You know, they could be a little bit more than friends. I just, it's really cute. It's really, really fun and I'm really enjoying it. I've been like smiling almost the whole way through reading this. So definitely enjoying this. Um, so I'm very excited to finish. I'm probably just going to sit down and finish it now. And hopefully that won't take me very long. Um, but 
yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. This book is so cute. Oh my god. It's so freaking cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, sorry. Um not to like spoil anything, but Dimple and Rishi go to this party and they're just having um a moment. It's good. It's a good moment. This book is so good. Oh my god. Okay, this book has been so good. I'm on page like 304, so I have about 50 pages left. And everything is like, it's so sweet. Everything has been so good. But I'm just like, there hasn't been like a big conflict yet. And I'm worried that something bad is going to go wrong. But everything is going so good right now. And I don't want things to go wrong. They're like uh the 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 workshop that they're doing. They they have a talent show. The workshop's over like six weeks. I don't know if they said that, but uh I think it's about week three or four right now and they're doing a talent show, like they do a talent show every year. Um Dimple and Rashi are doing a dance, a Bollywood dance. Um but I just feel like something is gonna go wrong. Like usually something goes wrong in a talent show like a talent show is like prime setting for something to go wrong something terrible or embarrassing to happen i just but uh yeah i'm just nervous i feel like something bad is gonna happen and i don't want it to i'm like hoping that this is just a nice happy feel good story nothing goes wrong at the talent show i just don't want anything to go wrong at the talent show public humiliation is just so uncomfortable to read and this is fully just me procrastinating reading the talent show because i i'm i'm scared okay i'm gonna keep reading so i just finished when dimple met rishi this was so cute i loved this so much everything turned out okay in the end in regards to the talent show i didn't have to worry as much as i did like things did go wrong but not not what i was thinking that was going to go wrong it was okay basically it was okay i do think though in saying that though like in my heart of hearts i know that this isn't like a five star read for me it's not something that i will probably pick up again i'll probably like it's probably like a four or three it's probably a 3.5 out of five stars honestly um, but it was so, like, so fun. Like, so good to read. Like, a great, I had a great experience reading this. I just have so much serotonin after reading that. Okay. So, that is my third book done for this readathon. I'm, I feel like I'm killing this. I feel like I'm doing so good. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna try find a mystery thriller. That could be kind of fun to read tonight. Let's, uh, let's go for a hunt and try and find a mystery thriller. Okay, I'm sorry if you can still hear my laptop. This is about as quiet as it's going to get. <laughs> um, so I've been looking on Goodreads for some mystery thrillers. And I found three that could be potentially interesting. The first one is one that I've been interested in reading for a while. I think it was the Goodreads Choice Awards winner for like the mystery thriller like category last year and that is The Silent Patient by Alex Michael Michaelides? Michaelides? Oh my god how do you even say that? I don't know. Um but it's about uh Alicia who doesn't talk. She's the silent patient. Uh makes sense. Um, so Alicia kills her husband and then she refuses to speak when she's killed him and there is a criminal psychotherapist who has waited a long time to work with Alicia. He wants to see if he can get her to talk basically um, and that sounds interesting but then there's also The Whisper Man by Alex North. I'm pretty sure Alex North has a new book that is coming out or has come out recently and I heard about it on the radio recently. I thought this was a really good book. The reviews are a bit, yeah. 
hit or miss but i mean it sounds kind of interesting could be a little bit spooky who knows and then the third option i have is lock every door by riley sager which i feel is just like a classic it came up in the readers also enjoyed section and like as soon as i saw it i was like that book everyone on booktube loves that book surely surely this one i think i think lock every door might be it i know chandler gave it five stars uh kayla gave it five stars and kat gave it four stars they're like some of the people who've been watching on booktube for like the longest they all get they all gave it really high ratings so i'm i'm tempted to just pick like lock every door pick lock every door <laughs> i'm just tempted to pick this one because obviously um everyone likes it but i mean i have a while to pick i will probably definitely read this much later on right now i'm going to get to reading quiet by susan kane um for anyone who's wondering quiet is a book about introverts susan kane uh studies introverts basically and she's written a whole book on it um i mean so far it's kind of interesting as i said i already started it and that's why i borrowed it like, that's why i brought it back home because i wanted to finish it and my mom very kindly let me borrow it so thank you mom you're helping me win a readathon, yay! But, I mean, so far not a lot has really happened. As in, like, I haven't really learnt a whole lot. I find it interesting because it is a book about introverts, but she's talking a lot at the start about this, like, extrovert ideal. So, you're learning a lot about extroverts at the moment. But, I mean, it's all, it's all obviously connected, and it's, I mean, it's not that it's not interesting, but... I think nothing I've read so far has been like eye-opening new information. I kind of hope that I don't read this book and I don't learn anything. Like I want to read this book and learn something from it, you know? It's a non-fiction book, isn't that the point of most non-fiction books? I don't know. But I'm about 50 pages in. It's like almost 2 p.m. I don't know how long it's going to take me to finish this. We'll just have to see. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I might actually try annotating this book only with sticky notes because it's not mine i can't write in it but that could be interesting sometimes i find when i annotate things i like read through them a little quicker sometimes slower but also sometimes quicker it just depends but um yeah i might grab some sticky notes and just uh start reading i'm <laughs> so um i just reached part two which is like, the first part was looking very much like uh, extroverts and, like, working in large groups. Part two is very much um, talking a lot about science and psychology studies, that kind of thing. And they're just talking about how they did test on babies. Um, testing a part of the brain where, like, your nervous system is, I think. It's called the, like, ab the gil ab ab the gil am amygdala. Amygdala. Thanks. The amygdala. And basically, high sensitive babies turn out to be introverts. So babies that like react to things, they're like more prone to stress and stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, sounds about right. And then they go on to say that it's funny because they've like, it's not 100% accurate, but physical traits of introverts are often linked to people with blue eyes allergies and hay fever and i'm sitting here with my blue eyes and my hay fever proness and i'm just like okay man they they really got me to a t huh <laughs> i don't know why i'm just feeling um just feeling slightly cold out i think hi if you don't know i'm an introvert <laughs> So just because I took a little break to go fill up my water bottle, I want you guys to take a moment to look at my uh, bookmark. I mean, my mom put this in this book, I don't know why, but uh, this was a cute surprise when I opened this book to find my Friends of the Zoo uh, ID card from when I was, Christ what, like seven, six? Uh, like, look at that. Look at that face. Look at that little, that little face. 
I cried straight after taking this picture, but you know, um, I look, I'm looking cute in the photo, I guess that's all that matters. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I'm on page, what, 162? So, uh, we're making progress, good progress. Okay, honestly, it's a little bit later than I was expecting it to be, it is just past six. 20 past 6, and I just finished reading Quiet by Suzanne Kane. Um, some thoughts. The orange are just, uh, chapters, because the chapters were quite long. Um, some interesting thoughts, some interesting things. Not, like, incredible, uh, not entirely groundbreaking, at least to me. I think my favourite part was part two which was your biology yourself so it looked more like the brain and psychology and i don't know it just seemed a bit more interesting than like the case studies that were included uh but overall interesting and i'm glad that i finally finished this book <laughs> i don't know i think i'll give it like a three stars probably so i think right now the next two books that i have set for the prompts is the murakami short story and uh, the mystery thriller, which I haven't chosen what I'm going to read, but I think it's going to be Lock Every Door by Riley Sage. But I am very aware that I also want to start Middle Game by Miss Shonen Maguire. I think I'm going to read the Murakami story now, find an ebook version, read that, and then once I'm done with that, read a little bit of middle game hello oh. so i just took a little break had a shower it's now 8 30. i'm gonna do some skincare gonna put on a little face mask it's gonna be cute and fun and fresh i did update you guys but um i didn't update you guys very well so uh an update <laughs> I finished reading After Dark by Murakami. I really, really liked it. I didn't know what it exactly I was expecting. Um, I've only read one other of his short stories, which was Sputnik Sweetheart. I read that earlier this year. Didn't really like it that much, uh, in all honesty. Um, but I mean, you know, that's okay. It was still like good in the sense that it was still very much Murakami's work but uh i've only read two other books of his and they were like infinitely better than sputnik sweetheart so i kind of went into after dark not expecting a whole lot but i don't kind of hard to describe how much i loved it but i really really loved it basically follows a group of people over the course of one night very interesting, very strange, kind of a little bit creepy, which I don't know, like not many of his other books that I've read have been like creepy in this way. Uh, Dance Dance Dance, which was the first Murakami book I read, was kind of spooky, like there was kind of like a haunted hotel kind of situation going on, uh, but it wasn't like spooky spooky. This was like kind of creepy. Uh, in a very, like, weird, I'd say more psychological sense than, like, it wasn't, like, jump scares, spooky or anything. It was just kind of weird. Um, but I really liked it. <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I even read, like, the back of the book. I don't even know what the synopsis is. I don't want to, like, tell you what the plot is because it's, like, it's really interesting. You should just definitely recommend. I really enjoyed it. Would recommend. But, uh, it is now... 8.30, I think, uh, while I do my face mask, I will probably start reading Middle Game, which I'm very, very excited for. Very, very excited for. Uh, I don't know how long I'll read that for. I'll probably just read a little bit. And then I will have to decide what mystery thriller I want to read. I know, I think I said that I was going to uh, pick Lock Every Door, I think, is that what it's called? By Riley Sega. But when I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking about it now, and I'm like, I, I kind of want to pick The Silent Patient. Uh, they both sound, like, they both sound interesting. Like, I'll probably read both of them at some point, but I think 
now I'm suddenly leaning towards the silent patient and I now I just I don't know <laughs> which one I'm gonna pick when the time comes so we're gonna put that off for a little bit longer I'm going to uh, put my face mask on I'm also gonna clean my piercings because that's what you meant to do when you have piercings you meant to clean them so I'm gonna clean them and do some reading start middle game very very excited um hi so instead of starting middle game by Shona mcguire i made noodles and after a discussion with damon i have decided to read hello <laughs> i have decided to read lock every door Damon decided that I would be reading Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. It's like 9.30 now. Well, it's 20 past 9. I'm probably not going to start Middle Game right now. I'll probably read it like right before I go to sleep. Um, but I am going to start Lock Every Door by Miss Riley Sager. Um, I don't know how quickly I'll get through it. Hopefully it's a page turner. I mean, it's a mystery thriller, surely. It's, uh, you know, surely it's engaging. You, we're gonna hope, we're gonna hope. So I've just started, uh, you can probably hear my laptop going off in the background. Um, so we meet, I think her name's Jules. I think it's Jules. I think Jules is the main character. We meet Jules and she's going to the Bartholomew. She responded to an ad and this lady, Leslie, takes her up and she's like, hey, we're paying someone to live in this apartment and Jules is like what no this is insanely nice why would you pay someone to live there there's like some weird rules there are some famous people who live in the building they want to keep it occupied and safe whatever and this lady's like yep uh so we're gonna pay you four thousand dollars a month to stay in this apartment four thousand dollars a month F <laughs> I'm like no way like n surely not surely not how does she not how is she not sus about that ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and she gets to stay there for three months that's 12 grand like shut up like shut up so jules is getting interviewed to stay at this apartment in the bustle on you she's very much alone no family just working up with her boyfriend living at a friend's house lost her job She's got, like, no one. No one. Um, and Leslie in the interview is like, oh, are you healthy? Like, are there any health problems? Do you have any allergies? All this stuff. And she's like, no. Allergic to bees. Carry an EpiPen. Blah, blah, blah. Like, that's a little sus. Why would you ask about health? Um, I don't know. It just seems a bit... Uh, and then the last question in the interview was, are you an inquisitive person? And, like, it's posed as, like, oh, we have famous people in the building. We don't want people, like, secretly working for tabloids or whatever. But I think it's a bit sus. I think they're trying to get people in there. And I think they're going to try to do something to them. Something is not right with this hotel. I mean, obviously, that's, like, in the synopsis. But uh, also, when they're taking a tour of the of the apartment, there's, like, a dumbwaiter. And Jules was like, oh, is that a dumbwaiter? And Leslie's like, mm, yeah, I don't know where it goes, so it's never been used in years. If something scary doesn't happen with the dumbwaiter, slap me silly. Because, like, why would something not, like, why would why would they, like, not take that opportunity? Like, dumbwaiters are freaky as hell. Surely something happens with the dumbwaiter. Also, there were a whole lot of gargoyles on the building. It's meant to be, like, a gothic vibe kind of sus gargoyles are always kind of sus i don't know how it all i don't know how it all ties together but i'm like i'm just suspicious of everything <laughs> it's the final morning it's like five almost six a.m we need to talk about lock every door by riley sager the next few minutes will be a little bit spoilery so maybe if you don't want to get spoiled for this, uh, maybe you can just skip ahead. I'll put the word spoilers on the screen. When they disappear, you know you're, you're good to listen. I'm kind of mad. I'm kind of mad. So basically, a few chapters ago, 
I guess like leading up to the climax. Our main character Jules is like learning more about the Bartholomew, she's learning more about everyone disappearing, she's learning more about like the previous tenants. Like a lot of the tenants currently, like early on in the book when they introduce themselves, they're like, oh yeah, my like my whole family's lived here. So she learns about the like the history of the tenants at the Bartholomew. And basically, uh <laughs> she comes to the conclusion that everyone at the Bartholomew is part of a devil worshipping cult um and i read that and i was like oh this sucks i was like if this is the plot twist this sucks like i don't care about a devil worshipping cult like a cult cults are interesting for sure but like your classic like the classic i was like no this is not this is not what i wanted from lock every door which is meant to be an incredible mystery thriller right anyway literally like 10 minutes ago i was talking to damon and i was like listen what i thought was like there are a lot of patients who are old and famous and like sick i thought that this hospital was going to be like they'd get in these apartment sitters who have to be like healthy they have to have like no living relatives like they have to be totally isolated and totally healthy and i thought it was going to be something where they like harvest their life or their organs for these rich healthy people right literally like two chapters later that's exactly what we find out exactly what we find out. i'm just reading like i'm halfway through the explanation now nick the surgeon next door is like ha ha yeah my grandfather wanted a place for the wealthy to live so they can always stay healthy and you know when i was talking to damon and i was like this would be good that's what i thought but now that we've had like the like n now that i've thought it was the devil worshiping cult and now i'm like oh i was right i'm like i'm not loving it i'm really not i'm not i'm just i'm kind of mad why is this like low-key too predictable like i called this right from the start i don't know if i said that but you know i think i like i think i mentioned that it was sus that like at the interview uh leslie was like you know um we need to know your medical records and like um you need to not be inquisitive and like you need to be like completely like do you have any friends or family or anything like that like it was sus it was sus and then like as soon as i found out that nick was a surgeon of course it was like obvious that they were doing something medical behind the scenes but like i didn't expect to get it so right and i'm kind of mad that I got it so right. I'm gonna keep reading, I'm gonna finish this book, and then we <laughs> we can move on. I'm suddenly I'm like mad that I've even read this. I hope like there's still a bit a few pages left, you know, there's still a bit of time. Hopefully it redeems itself in like the last like 20 pages. I don't know why I'm so mad by that ending. But I am so mad by that ending. I hated that. <laughs> I think that was probably the worst book I've read so far during this readathon. <laughs> it is so sad. Everyone I know, like, I've only heard good things about it. I've only heard good things about it. To be fair, okay, to be fair, I mean, if it isn't obvious, I finished Lucky Riddle by Riley Sager, just saying. Um, to be fair, I think it's not, like, it's not terrible. It really isn't. Like, it's a decent book. It's a decent book. I'm just, the little twist before the actual twist did not work for me. Did not work for me. Um... I'm also mad because it was like very very obvious what was going on and I don't I didn't like that I wish it would have been a bit more shocking I guess for a mystery thriller I don't know like I do like guessing things it's not that I'm mad that I predicted something and it was right it's more that like it was really easy to predict and I was absolutely right like 100% uh so anyway that was that thank god it's just past six i will talk to you guys about what i'm reading next in a hot second it's now like 6 30 a.m i have a coffee we're gonna move on to the final two books 
for this readathon. Uh, I think I have help. I can't do maths. Four and a half hours until this readathon ends. So reading two books in that time might be tricky, but I have faith in myself because I know what two books I'm going to read. Uh, let's discuss. If you were wondering, I did stay up last night to uh, see the, the final roll prompts. Like I did stay up till 11, but Damon was already asleep and I was so tired, so I didn't like vlog. But um, I did see the final rolls last night, so I could decide what books I was going to read. And I knew like instantly what I was going to read. So um, the first roll, or the first roll that I saw, I don't know if it was in order, but the first roll that I saw was uh, Contemporary or Romance, which works perfectly for me. So instead I've gone with a romance that I've been really wanting to read. I was actually going to read it for another video, but I just, I just want to read it now. And that is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. So Take a Hint, Danny Brown just came out like a few weeks ago, so I'm very excited to get to that. And then the final role, which I was so happy about, was a young adult fantasy. You know, I started it in the last readathon. We're going to finish it in this one. Cry is War by Miss Nina Varela. I mean, I just think that's so perfect that at the start of this reading vlog, I got this copy and I actually have a chance to finish it now because I started it in the uh, Make Your Myth Taker readathon and I didn't even get to finish it. So now's my chance and I'm very, very excited to uh, read this. It's going to be a bit of a race against the clock, but uh, that's just exciting, I guess. I'm not going to read Cry as War well now. I actually have Take a Hint, Annie Brown on my laptop, the ebook. I've just started reading it. You know, I don't think I said this, but my tripod is like breaking, so I've had to like hold my phone this whole vlog, and I wish I could just have my tripod like sit up so i could just like talk to you guys without having to like adjust um anyway i've just finished the first chapter of take a hint danny brown i love mr zeff holy shit in get a life chloe brown i didn't really like redford i think was the love interest names i think that was his name and i liked chloe so i liked the book you know I don't know why, but in a lot of romances, I always consider the female to be the main character, even if it's like a dual point of view. I'm just like, mm, yeah, the female is the main character and the guy is the love interest. I, I don't know why, that's just, yeah, that's just always how I read them. Um, anyway, uh, Danny, incredible, love her, but, uh, Zeph's introduction? Stunning. Um, he's listening to an audiobook at work and, like, right at the start of the chapter, or like his his point of view he stops it he like pushes pause because he gets to a sex scene and he's like i can't listen to this at work and then danny comes in she got him a coffee so she gives him a coffee he has a protein bar for her so he gives her the protein bar except when he goes to give her the protein bar he accidentally pushes play on his audiobook and the sex scene just like fills the room and he's like he's like so embarrassed so embarrassed and he God, he's pining after Miss Denny so hard, so hard, and I love that. Um, one chapter in it, I'm already loving this a lot more than Chloe Brown, and I'm very excited. Why is Mr. Zeff making me swear? I... It's been a hot second since I've read a romance book with a male character who's made me go... But, uh, ooh, <laughs> a big ooh. <laughs> For context, we're still, like, on, like, the second chapter or something. There is a fake, like, fire gas drill or whatever. And so everyone evacuates the building, and Zaf, I think he's, like, a security guard, he notices that Danny hasn't left the building. So he runs in, he's, like, looking for her. Danny thinks she's, like, dying. Uh, she's stuck in an elevator. He finds her, he like hears her in the elevator. He pries it open with his bare fucking hands. Like lifts her out. She's like, oh, Mr. Zav. And then he's all like, 
oh my gosh you hurt your hand and she's like oh it's nothing he just like lifts her up just picks her up and carries her downstairs and i'm like get you a man who rips open a lift door and then like bridal carries you to a nurse because <laughs> i'm i'm liking this too much and i'm only on page 23 of this ebook uh, mm, mm, delicious Someone tell me why I'm about to cry after reading that book. I know I said I'd talk about it at the end because I have to start reading Cry as War. But do you take anything away from this readathon? Let it be. Go read Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move on and start reading Cry as War. I mean, I've already started it. I uh, I started reading it in my last reading vlog. So I'm going to start from the start, but I'll probably like read through what I'd already read quite quickly. But I do want to start from the beginning so I can reacquaint myself. My memory is awful. Chances are I've already forgotten like half of what happens. So <laughs> uh, Danny Brown was just so good. Okay, we'll talk about that later. On to Cry as War. So I just wanted to do a little update. It is, it's not quite 11, but it's close. Like this readathon's like 10, 20 minutes away from being done. I am only just on chapter nine of Cryer's War. I'm almost halfway through. There's no way I'm going to read. There's no way I'm going to finish this by 11, but uh, that's okay. Um, I'm honestly probably just gonna keep reading. <laughs> Um, I just really want to finish this book. Like, really want to finish this book. So, I'm probably just going to sit and read this. And then I will come and update you guys. Do the final update. Wrap this vlog up. And let you know how how it all went. The final, the final, just the final. Well, we're going to wrap up the vlog. That's it, basically. I haven't read past uh, what I had read last time. Does that make sense? I'm I'm still reading the stuff that I've already read. Like I haven't reached the second half of the book that I haven't read yet. But all I can say is I feel like I'm reading an entirely different story. I definitely had forgotten a lot that had happened at the start, so I'm glad that I am taking the time to just read it and enjoy it. Um I would die for Lady Cryer. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, would die for her would die for her her sweet little automated heart oh my goodness i love cryer so much sweet summer child oh my goodness um but also i'm just gonna say it okay so i'll put spoilers on the screen if you don't want to know but also like i don't know why i find this so funny but i absolutely do so the plot twist that I was talking about before, basically, we're introduced to a new character who we thought, like, we've been told is dead, basically, but they're not dead, they're very much alive, um, and it's, it's basically Ayla's brother, her twin brother, he's meant to be dead, he's very much alive, and he's very much fucking one of the queens from one of the other lands, I'm just... <laughs> don't know why i just like i think everything to do with him storm his name's storm everything to do with storm is just gonna shock me i don't know what to expect from him he's been dead this whole book and now he's alive and now he's and now he's fucking the queen and i'm just like what is this man not gonna do um <laughs> i find that so funny so funny anyway um that's just very amusing to me Cryer goes to the Queen's, it's like the Queen's visiting Cryer's land and Cryer goes to like the Queen's bedchambers and she hears them and she's like, oh, oh, she's like, Autumn Maiden, don't do that. Why are they doing that? Sweet little summer child, oh my goodness. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I just found that highly amusing. The end of Cryer's War. Um, 
I can't even. Um, all I'm going to say is, this is some infernal devices shit. Will Herondale, who? Miss Cryer is making headlines. I'm not even done yet. <laughs> I'm on page 417. I'm like on the last chapter, I think. It looks like the last chapter. I have, yeah, I have a few more pages. But if I think what's about to happen is going to happen, I will be ruined. <laughs> I don't even want to finish this now. I don't want to cry. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna finish it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, it's fine. Oh, thank God, it's fine. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, it's all fine. It's fine. It's okay. What? I finished Cry's War. So good, but also the ending. Okay, the ending did not happen. What I was what I was worried about didn't happen, which I'm, which I'm glad because that would have wrecked me, mind, body, and soul. But, but the end I feel like isn't right, in the sense that at the end, Cry gets a message from someone. The thing is, they're speaking in code, and I feel like she is interpreting the code wrong, or like there's been a mix-up in the code. I I feel like what Cryer thinks at the end of this book is not actually what like is real, if that makes sense, because of the code. That was a ride. That's all I'm going to say. Oh my goodness. Um, it's now past one. I'm going to, uh, update my Goodreads, go through and review all the books that I've read for this readathon, and then I will sit down and wrap up the vlog with you guys. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the fact that I won a readathon? Finally? Did I only really write half ass reviews on Goodreads? Absolutely. Okay, it's been some time. I kinda got up, uh, finished writing all my Goodreads reviews for all of the books that I've read in the past 48 hours. Oh my goodness. Uh, so let's recap. Um, I'm gonna throw and talk about each of the books, not in the order that I read them, but in the order of the role prompts. So, starting with role one, then role two, all the way down to role eight. It makes sense. Um, technically, for the readathon, within the time frame, I only managed to finish seven books and get halfway through the eighth book. But I mean, I finished the eighth book after the 48 hours were up. I'm just gonna talk about it anyway. We're gonna say it counts. It counts. Let me, let me have this, okay? I like... So the first prompt roll was to read a magical realism or paranormal book. For this, I read After Dark by Haruki Murakami. I read this as an ebook. I 
loved this easily i think my new favorite murakami book up there with norwegian wood i gave this a five out of five stars short sweet i don't know why or how just super hard hitting and i just i just don't think i'm going to be able to forget this book for a while it's gonna it's gonna linger it's gonna stay in my mind for a very long time i can feel it so five out of five stars first first book starting off strong and staying strong the second role was to read a chance card a random book for this i got my boyfriend to pick one of my unread books from my bookshelf and he picked out girls with sharp sticks by suzanne young i gave this i gave it a five stars on goodreads a five out of five stars but i said in my review it's more of a 4.5 but i really enjoyed this i was actually so surprised by how much i liked this a uh, super interesting feminist kind of dystopian book super quick read super engaging super interesting i actually i i didn't expect to love this as much as i did but i absolutely did and i know the second book is out uh and i'm going to go get that as soon as i can so i can carry on with this series because I am intrigued. The next set of role prompts started off with a culturally diverse prompt. For this I read When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. I could not stop smiling when I read this. I love this so much. Super, super great YA romance contemporary. I only gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's more of a 3.5. I know that like at the end of the day this is just another YA book like it's not going to stick with me as much as i as much as i enjoyed reading this book like it's i'm probably not going to pick it up and read it again um but like i had such a great time reading this like cannot stress that enough if you're looking for something fun and sweet and again i mean like culturally diverse this is such a good book cannot recommend it enough the fourth prompt was to read a viewer's recommendation so for this i went to Instagram and Twitter. I ended up picking a Twitter recommendation which was to read Milk and Honey by Rupi Ka. Finally read it. Uh, gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Closer to a 2 stars. I liked some of the poems. As you can see I went and marked some of the ones that I liked. Overall just didn't feel... Uh, just like just didn't feel good enough been afraid to say it but like I just nope not really not incredible so very average three stars picked it because it was short that was that a lot of people recommended that I read middle game by Shona Maguire and I fully intended to read this but I didn't have the time which is totally fine I'm just probably gonna end up picking this up like sometime this week and reading it so I'm excited to get to that uh, but I know I mentioned it so just letting you know didn't get a chance to read this so we scratched that but that's okay <laughs> the fifth prompt was to read a mystery slash thriller for this i read lock every door by riley sega i gave this a one out of five stars on goodreads objectively as i said like i don't actually think technically it is a bad book objectively i hated it <laughs> Uh, it made me mad and frustrated. It was too predictable, too cheesy, kind of like not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. I had really high hopes I think for this book just because I'd heard so many good things about it and it just kind of was a bit average and boring. Uh, and pair that with how predictable it was was not mysterious or thrilling so therefore it is a one star rating from me. The sixth prompt was to read a book that has been gifted to you. For this, I read Quiet by Suzanne Kane. This is technically not gifted to me. I borrowed this from my mum and I was already 50 pages in before I picked this up for the readathon, but it, like that wasn't really, I wasn't that far in, so I picked this anyway. I finished it. Finally, have been trying to finish this book for years, so very glad that it's finally done. Overall, kind of interesting not really as interesting as i expected it to be i think i gave this a three stars now on to the last batch of prompt rolls the seventh prompt was to read a contemporary or a romance for this i read take a hint danny brown by talia hibbert 
five out of five stars queen of romance miss talia hibbert oh my goodness uh this is the second book in the i can't remember what the series name is but this is the second book in the series the first book is get a life chloe brown this is the second one it came out a few weeks ago when i tell you this blew my mind and my heart let me tell you when i went into this readathon i did not expect to swoon over any fictional characters but uh zav i slowly started to be seducted by him oh wow also danny bisexual queen just just thank you talia hibbert for writing this book potentially my favorite book from this readathon it, honestly, it would be probably tied uh, first with the last book that I read for this readathon, which was we had to read the final prompt, Young Adult Fantasy, and that was Cry As Well by Nina Varela. I've taken the dust jacket off, but there it is. Um, uh, if you watched my last reading vlog, you know I started reading this for the Make Your Myth Taker reading readathon, uh, but I didn't finish it, so... I took this opportunity to pick it up. Technically, I'd already read like half of the book, but I started again from the start. I didn't finish this in the time for the book, like in the time that the Book of Leathon was meant to run for. I finished almost like two hours after the time, after the readathon technically ended. Um, but, but I just didn't want to rush this. It was so, so good. I love this world. That has been created i love these like the concept of these older maidens and they're like now the rulers of this human world they came from this human world but now they're the rulers i don't know it's like kind of it's a, it's technically a young adult fantasy sci-fi but it's the kind of sci-fi where i wasn't overwhelmed and i didn't hate it i really really liked it um definitely intriguing definitely fascinating uh definitely loved the relationship between miss lady crier and her handmaiden ayla i mm, i gave this a five out of five stars on goodreads i loved this so much but that is it for this readathon this weekend of me just reading i feel like if you're wondering like oh you didn't really show us anything else that you did this weekend when I say I sat in bed and I just read all weekend, that is exactly what I did. I did not go anywhere. I did not do anything else. I didn't even like, I didn't even edit videos. I didn't even do any writing. I just read all weekend. It was fantastic. Honestly, it was exactly what I needed. <laughs> Apologies if you wanted a little more variety in the vlog, but um, that's literally all I did was read so I mean that's all you're that's all you're getting from this vlog because that is literally all I did uh I'm just happy that I finally had a successful readathon and I finally have a successful readathon reading vlog going up finally but that is it for this reading vlog I've talked to you guys long enough I think really um if if you participated in this readathon this weekend, let me know how it went for you. I would love to hear about it. If you did a vlog too, let me know. I'd love to come and watch. Um, but as always, I will see you guys in another video as well later this week. Bye.